I have a really special announcement for you. You have the opportunity to participate in Love the Valley. So Love the Valley is our yearly event when we intentionally show God's love to our community in different ways. So you can participate by coloring a picture like this. We have lots of different pictures for you to choose from. So go to our website and print one out. So these pictures will be put with the hampers, which are packages of food and supplies that will be delivered to people in our community. You can drop off your pictures here at the church Monday to Friday during our church hours. So get coloring. Uh, hi guys. I didn't realize you were there. You could see me. Oh well, I was having fun being a hero. Do you like my cape? I think it matches really well our theme that we started last week, Bible Heroes. Well, did you get to practice being a hero like Noah to be more righteous by obeying God? I got a little practice in, but there is room just for so much more yet. Well, here are a few clues for you to guess who our Bible hero is today. Hmm, I should actually say Bible heroes because it's a duo team. Yeah, this week there's a man and a woman. Now this was actually your first clue. The second clue, there's a king in this story. And third clue, the woman hero has a Bible book named after her. How cool is that? Now I will give you 10 seconds to try to guess who they are. Well, we'll see after worship if you guess right who they are. Now I invite you to stand up for our worship time. If you feel like jumping, dancing, clapping, just sing your heart out to worship God. <laughs> God loves me, he can do anything. If I run over here, if I run over there, God is everywhere and he loves me. When I look up, 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 I know he's real. When I look down, 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 I believe what I found. When I look in God's word and I search for him, he rewards me. Cause he loves me God made me, he made everything God loves me, he can do anything If I run over here, if I run over there God is everywhere and he loves me When I look up, 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 I know he's real When I look down, down, down Believe what I found When I look in God's word And I search for Him He rewards me Cause He loves me When I look up, up, up I know He's real When I look down, down, down I believe what I found When I look in God's word And I search for Him He rewards me Cause He loves me
jump around, everybody singing in the name of Jesus. We gotta get up, turn around, jump around and praise His name. We gotta get up, turn around, jump around, everybody singing in the name of Jesus. We gotta get up, turn around, jump around and praise His name. Let's clap our hands, let's dance around. Stomp our feet and sing out loud. We gotta get up, turn around, jump around. Everybody singing in the name of Jesus. We gotta get up, turn around, jump around and praise His name. We gotta get up, turn around, jump around. Everybody singing in the name of Jesus. We gotta get up, turn around, jump around and praise His name. Clap our hands, let's dance around, let's stomp our feet, and sing out loud, we gotta get up, turn around, jump around, everybody singing in the name of Jesus, we gotta get up, turn around, jump around and praise His name, we gotta get up, turn around, jump around, everybody singing in the name Jesus, we gotta get up, turn around, jump around and praise his name. And praise his name. and is found in the book of Esther. It took place in a country named Persia. Xerxes was king over Persia, and he ruled over 127 provinces. He was a very wealthy king, and he loved partying and showing off his riches. Now, one day, he got very mad at Queen Vashti for refusing to come to another of his many parties. In his anger, he dethroned Vashti from her role as queen and wife. Obviously, like, this was not a nice thing to do to his queen wife, but that's what he did. 
Now his advisors gave him the idea to search for a new queen that would also be his wife by hosting a beauty contest. Now the king really liked that idea and that's when Esther came in the picture. See what she has to say. Overnight, my whole life changed. I was just doing my thing, living my normal, simple life. And the next thing you know, I'm in a palace. Whoa, being pampered like a star. I had been chosen to be part of this group of young ladies for a very special beauty contest of some sort. Like, like possibly to be chosen by the king to become his wife and a queen. Yikes! I didn't know what to think. Was I supposed to be excited or sad? What if I was chosen? Did I want to have this kind of life? To be a queen? To be the king's wife? Look at what happened to Queen Vashti. In all of its glamour, this life can be very hard. And yet, I couldn't complain. The spa treatments that I got for a complete year with special oils and perfumes, it was amazing. And the food, so, so good. Yeah. And I also had my cousin Mordecai cheering me on. He was like such a good dad to me. Hey guys, I'm cousin Mordecai. And so I guess I should tell you a little bit about myself. Well, first of all, I want you to know that I'm a person who really, really loves God. I'm also Jewish and so is Esther. Our families were taken in captivity far from our beautiful homeland in Israel. It was a very difficult time, but this explains why we live in Persia now. Esther's Jewish name is actually Hadessa, but around here, we just call her Esther. Now guys, you have to know the story of Esther. When she was very young, both of her parents died, and it was really sad. She had no one to take care of her. So I decided I would take her in and I raised her just like I would raise my very own daughter. I loved her so much. I became like a dad to her. Some people compliment me and said that was a very unselfish thing to do for Esther. Maybe it's true, but honestly guys, I just love this young girl and there's no way that I was gonna let her be an orphan or die of hunger. But now guys, many years have passed and she's all grown up. And honestly, she is so kind, she's so smart, and she is so beautiful as well. When they came to get her for the beauty pageant for the contest, first of all, I wasn't surprised. But I made sure to stick around the palace. I needed to know that Esther was well taken care of. For her own safety, I even told Esther not to tell anyone that she was Jewish. And I'm so glad that she listened to my advice People around here don't always like Jews very much. Mordecai and Esther both loved God. Even though God's name is not mentioned in the book of Esther, we see God's hand all over this story. Because of all the beautiful young ladies that were brought to the king, Esther was the one the king loved. The Bible says she won his favor and approval more than any of the other women. So he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen. Oh, would this be a coincidence? No way. This is God's hand all over this story. Now the king gave a great banquet to celebrate Esther and even proclaimed a holiday throughout all the provinces in her honor. And as for Mordecai, one day as he was near the palace, he overheard two people making plans to kill the king. Mordecai quickly told Queen Esther, who in turn, in turn notified the king 
Mordecai got to be part of saving the king's life. What an honor. Mordecai was a hero. A hero? I guess I was a hero, but honestly, I just didn't want the king to die. I didn't get a reward or anything like that, but, but that's totally fine because I got to save the king's life. So after all of this happened, King Xerxes honored Haman. Haman got a superior rank at the palace, and this promotion made him so prideful because everyone needed to bow down before him. Well, almost everyone. I, I tried, guys. I tried to bow down, but I just couldn't do it. And you know why I couldn't do it? Because I made a promise long ago that the only person I would ever bow down to would be God himself. The story will be continued after this commercial. But kids, after grow time, why don't you make yourself a palace as well? You can find blankets and maybe a table and some chairs around your very own house. And just like we're going to do, you can read the story of Esther while you're in your palace. It has 10 chapters. You can either read all in one day or split it into one chapter a day. If you don't read it all in one day, you could have some fun making a new palace every single day to read your chapter. Enjoy reading your Bible and your new palace. Before the commercial, Mordecai was saying that he knelt down only before God and not before man. Well, that's when things started to get ugly. Yeah, Haman got so furious at Mordecai for not bowing down. Then, when he heard that Mordecai was a Jew, he hated him even more. So much that he wanted Mordecai and all the Jewish people dead. Now, Haman went to King Xerxes in a sneaky way. Haman tricked the king into commanding a specific day when every Jewish person in Persia would be killed. Adults and kids too. Now, Haman was very happy the king had approved his plan, but remember, the king did not know that Esther was Jewish. When I heard about this wicked scheme, I was devastated. And so were all of the Jewish people in Persia. So I sent word to Esther about this terrible plan. Something needed to be done to protect our people. And that's when I realized, could it be that God had actually orchestrated everything so Esther would become queen? During this time, he would use her to rescue our people, the Jews? Oh, guys, the more I thought about it, the more I realized God had to be in this. When I got this devastating news, I just started to cry. I was so sad. Then Mordecai said that I needed to reveal the secret, that I was Jewish, and plead the king to protect our people. I told him, Mordecai, it's not that easy. Anyone who approaches the king without being invited even me, the queen, can be put to death unless the king ex extends the golden scepter to them. Now, that's really scary, right? But I could not be selfish. I had to be unselfish because it was not about me, but it was about saving my people. I had to talk with the king, even if it meant that I could die for doing so. And then Mordecai encouraged me with these words. He said to me, Esther, it looks like you have become queen for such a time as this. And he was right. This was no coincidence. God was in this. So I told my cousin to tell every Jew to pray and fast for three days with me before I go see the king. And so that's what we did. For three days, we did not eat or drink. We cried out to God to help us. That was so smart to stop and pray. Esther knew God could hear them. 
on the third day of the prayer and fast time, that's when they began seeing an answer to their prayers. Kids, that's our God. He hears our prayers. So it was the day, the day that I was going to go and see the king. Would he extend the scepter? If not, <laughs> I was done. Oh, man. So I put on my most beautiful royal dress and I stood in the inner court of the palace waiting. The king was sitting on his royal throne. Oh, and when he saw me, to my greatest delight, he was happy to see me. Oh, he held out the golden scepter like this. Oh man, that was a good sign. I was so relieved. God was giving me favor in the king's presence. The king asked me, what did I want? I didn't say right away about my people being in danger because it just wasn't the right time. Instead, I invited him and Haman to a banquet on the following day, and he gladly agreed to come. God is so good. He was giving Esther wisdom to know what to say. Now that same day, Haman saw Mordecai at the palace gate. Again, Mordecai did not kneel. Now that was it. Haman could not take it anymore. He thought tomorrow, I will ask the king to have someone kill Mordecai. Now listen to this. That same night, as the king could not sleep, he asked someone to bring him the book in which every detail of his reign was recorded. In it, he read about Mordecai saving his life. Remember when we talked about that earlier? And that's when he realized he had not rewarded Mordecai. So the very next day, I got rewarded. And guys, it was so cool. I got to sit on a royal horse. And as the king commanded, Haman led the horse and had to shout, this is what is done for the man the king delights to honor. Guys, and it gets even better. This is the day that Haman wanted me dead. And look what he had to do instead. What a great story. Oh, God, your hand had to be in this. So there's more to this story. It was now the banquet day. The king came and Haman came. Again, the king kindly asked me what my request was. He said I could even ask for half of the kingdom and he would give it to me. Ah, he surely does love me. Oh, yeah. Then I revealed to him that I was Jewish and that my people and I, we were in danger. In front of Haman, I told the king Haman had a wicked scheme. And the king got really angry at Haman and he had his life taken. The king made sure that my people would be safe. He made a new law saying that no one could harm the Jewish people. God, you are so, so good. And in such a time as this, God, you made me to be queen so that I could be a part of helping your people. Thank you, God. And that very same day, Esther told the king I was related to her. And so what did the king do? Well, he honored me by giving me a special ring just like this. He also, if you can believe this, gave me Haman's special position in the palace. Guys, can you imagine me, a simple Jewish guy, now working in the palace with the king and Esther? Does it get any better than this? Oh, maybe just a little bit, because since the king gave Esther all of Haman's estate, she appointed me over it. Guys, this story is amazing. And you know what it makes amazing? It makes it amazing because there was one person who made all of this happen, and that was God. And so I say thank you, God, for taking care of me and Esther and all of our people. 
Mordecai and Esther are amazing Bible heroes. In my perspective, they are heroes because they were both unselfish. Being unselfish means to place the needs of others before your own, even when you don't feel like it. Mordecai was unselfish by taking orphan Esther in his home. He placed Esther's needs first, not his. Esther was unselfish when she went to see the king uninvited and could have been killed for it. She placed the need of the Jewish people first, not hers. She risked her very own life. Being unselfish is a character trait that God wants us to get better at. He wants us to practice, practice being unselfish because this pleases God. Guys, I want, I want to please God, right? I hope that's your desire too. God loves us just so much and he himself is not selfish. He is unselfish. When sin separated us from him, he didn't say, I don't care. No, he gave us his son to die on the cross so our sins could be forgiven when we come to him. So I want to be unselfish like God, like Mordecai, like Esther. I want to bless people around me by being unselfish too. We have to remember that being unselfish is being kind to others even when it's not what I feel like doing. So how can we be heroes of unselfishness in day-to-day -day life, right? So I want us to play a game to find out how we can do that. So this game is played with teams of two. When I say so, you'll go and get yourself a bowl and a spoon for each team. And if you need someone to play with you, get someone at the same time. You have three minutes right now to do that.
two awesome people that you might just recognize because one of them is Valérie who teaches in Grow and her husband which is Pastor Brenton. So I invite you to come join us. Woo! to wash the dishes, not yours, but he's sick. You tell him, just relax, I'll do the dishes for you this time. That's unselfish, that, that's unselfish, yeah, that's unselfish, that, that's unselfish. Yay! You're right, that is unselfish. That's the way to go. Next scenario, by accident, someone drops a book and you saw it, but you just passed it by. That's selfish. Yeah. What would you do? Maybe we could pick up the book and say, hey, you dropped your book. Yeah. Yeah, that would be unselfish. Yes. Okay, another scenario. Are you ready? Yeah. Totally. You're sure? Mm-hmm. Okay. Totally. You win at something? but your friend helped you win. You say, I want, I want, I'm the best. Selfish. Selfish. What would you do instead in this situation? I would say, hey, man, we're a good team. And then I'd hit a home run and give him a high five. It's teamwork. Yay. Yeah, yay, that would be. Unselfish! Woo! The last scenario. You have a game you really want to play and your sister wants to play a different game. You say, let's play your game and if we have time, we will play mine next time. I'm that's unselfish! That, that's unselfish! Yeah, that's unselfish! That's unselfish! Yeah! I just love how Mordecai and Esther turned to God. They prayed and asked for his help, right? So I want us to pray right now and let's ask God for his help to be unselfish because it's not natural for us to be unselfish. The natural for us is to be selfish. So let's ask for his help. God, we just want to thank you for your amazing love for us. Oh, you are the perfect example of being unselfish. So you can totally help us. Holy Spirit, be with us this week. When we want to keep things for us and, and just be selfish, just come and, and remind us to be unselfish. Be our help. Amen. Amen. 